All right, now what I want to do is uh, get into God's Word. Uh, we're going to go to, uh, don't forget the Paul's vision. It's so important. Open the eyes. Turn them from darkness to light. Turn them from the power of Satan to God. That they may receive. Now once your eyes is open, I believe it's when you will receive. I know that people think that they are already there. Uh, but my wife and I, we got in a conversation this past week, and she asked me some questions. And through asking me those questions came my message. And I believe that we will be the answer for everybody's question. So I believe you just listen today uh, and let it come in. Let the word come into you. Let the light come into your heart. And I believe by doing that, you're going to realize what I've been saying all these times and all these years, uh, this message is life-changing. And like I said before, there are some things God has given me that has just changed my life. This is one of them today. So we're going to go to the book of Galatia uh, in chapter 5. Uh, one of my favorite books out of the 14 new books in the New Covenant. This is one of them. Uh, Galatia chapter 5, because in Galatia, you learn uh, why Paul got so hot. But he didn't get just hot in Galatia. He got hot in Corinth. He got hot in all those books because Paul had come to, to these places, these churches, and started them. And then when he comes back, they doing something totally different. So I want you to understand this is where we are today in the modern day church. All right, exactly the same thing. And these, this church did not know what they were doing. And I'm going to show you what they were doing in, in the word of God. All right, Galatians chapter 5, we're going to look at verse 1 through verse 4. And I want you to read with me today. I want you to really, 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 really listen today. Because you're going to get what so many people are watching us now on television, uh, Facebook, and going to be watching the podcast. All right, verse 1, read it. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now, he's talking to Jews, dominantly Jews. We know that because when you go back and look at the first seven books that Paul wrote before he went into prison, we know the prison epistles, most of those books was written to Gentiles. But here you know he's writing the Jews believer because we know he has not gone to prison yet. How many know the seven books that he wrote before he went to prison? Has anybody got an idea? Uh, number one, Galatia. We'll start out right there, okay? And then he wrote uh, uh, First and Second Corinthians and First and Second Thessalonians and uh, the book of Romans, see, and, and Hebrews. Those books were written by Paul before uh, he went into prison. So you need to always keep that in a mentality. All right. Now, we are reading to you Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. So he's telling that church, go back to verse 1. He's telling that church, you got to stand fast. Let's read together. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty, liberty, freedom, wherewith Christ has made us free. And then he said, look, be not entangled again. Don't go back. Don't go back. Don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. The yoke of bondage was the law. Then he said to them, Behold, I, Paul, I say to you, that if you be circumcised. See, he's, they want to go and ask him, Paul a question about do we need to be circumcised? Just like a person asked me, do I need to be water baptized? The answer will come. You'll find out why today. All right. Uh, Behold, I say to you that if you be circumcised, watch what happened. Christ shall profit you nothing. Now, now you're going to get the answer from that because what does it mean Christ shall profit me nothing? You just left where God had put you is what you're going to see. All right. All right. Now, verse number three, read it. For I testify again to every man that circumcised, he's now a debtor to do the whole law. You just went back under the law. All right. Verse number four is your answer. Christ has become of no effect to you. Isn't that something? Christ is become of no effect to you now. Whosoever you are justified by the law. Why? 
because you are now fallen from grace. So I want to talk about today, what is fallen from grace? Because I want to show you where the church is today. What is fallen from grace? Now, I want you to understand, if, if you ever get this message, you're going to know all the other messages that I've taught you. One message I taught you, it was in the, on your podcast, number uh, 138, 139. We were, we were saved by the cross. I gave you that in tape 138, 139. We were, past tense, saved by the cross. Now, this is an awesome thing because we were already saved. See, we were, past tense, saved by the cross. Say, I was saved saved by the cross. cross. Say, 2,000 years ago, ago, Christ saved me. Now, that's an awesome thing. Now, I'm going to show you why Paul said, open the eyes. Turn them from the darkness light. Turn them from the power of Satan to God. Because what has happened is people have left salvation. I'm going to show you how, how it happens today. That's why I'm going to teach you what is falling from grace. All right? That's what Paul said. Now, Christ is become of no effect. Because now you're falling from grace. This is what happened uh, to this church. Now, I I want to go back, and I'm going to give you this. Go back to Isaiah chapter 12. From the book of Isaiah, chapter number 12. Uh, 14, I'm sorry. Isaiah chapter 14. In the book of Isaiah chapter 14, there's a verse... Uh, In verse 12, Isaiah chapter 14, but verse 12. And I want us to read this, because what we do is we read it, but we just think he's talking about Lucifer. But I'm going to show you everybody did the same thing. All right, Isaiah 14, 12, read together. How, so he's asking a question, if you figure out how it happened to Lucifer, you're going to figure out how it happened to you or anybody else today. How art thou fallen from heaven? We're going to find out how and where. So when God saved you, where did he put you? In the grace of God. Say, where did God put me? He put me in the grace of God. How many know Christ is the grace of God? All right, so he created you in Christ. He gave you everything. See, we always quote that, uh, uh, let's do this, and then we're going to go to Ephesians 1 and 3. Now, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For you said, in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. Now, this is the exact same thing that's happening to every person that's going to church that's not under the dispensation of grace. This is what you are saying. I get, I'm going to heaven this way. I get baptized in water in Jesus' name, I can go to heaven. If I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe my heart, God raised Jesus from the dead, I can go to heaven. I'm going to do this my way. God has already saved you. So you've got to get that part. That's why last week I gave you something last week. Don't forget how, how God saved you. Well, see, God saved you by the cross. When did God save you? He saved you 2,000 years ago. But see, what had happened is, from 2,000 years ago to now, we find ourselves looking for another way. So we got a church over here that says, you come over here and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart, God raised Jesus from the dead, take my catechism class and pay your tithes and be a part of this church, you will surely get to heaven. So they're giving you an alternative. 
Then you got a church over here saying, well, just come over here. You get baptized in water in Jesus' name. You can be able to speak in tongues and, and all this. Repent. Just, you got to repent. And go. You do all this stuff, and then you come over here. You surely are going to go to heaven. See, all these alternatives. God already gave you what he said. He said he already saved you. See, so when I go to Ephesians this time, you're going to see it again. By grace, you already been saved. But see, what happened is because we've been looking for another way and have not accepted the way, then we end up over here at this church or this church or this church. We don't want, we don't want to be saved by God's way. See, God already saved, I can't say it enough, God already saved you. Until that gets in, nothing else is going to work. Because if you don't realize, you already are saved. You've already been saved. It's no different. I'm going to go to the garden. I'm going to go to the garden. You are no different from Adam. You are no different from Lucifer, son of the morning. You are no different from the angels. They all has been put where you are today. And they all fail. See, what happens is we just don't thank God talking to us. I'm already there. See, but today, I pray today that God would open your eyes. So that's what has to happen. And you will be able to know that God saved you already and you have fallen from grace. You left the grace of God. See, you, you can't preach grace to churches. You go to churches, you're going to hear faith and water baptism. You don't hear people preaching the cross no more. You're living in a time where they don't preach the cross anymore. Or they'll say a few words, but they don't preach the cross for salvation. They just tell you you're going to have to have faith. You got to confess with your mouth. You got to believe with your heart. You got to take a class here, catechism, then you join the church. If you don't stay at my church through water baptism and joining my church, then you don't get to heaven. Then you got this other church you can baptize in, as a baby. And then you enter into all of the priesthoods. And then you go through Mary and you go through all, all of this here. Then you can make it. And God has sit, still sitting there looking at you saying, when are you going to understand that I already saved you? I did not leave your salvation in nobody else's hand. I saved you before you were born. I already saved you and told you in the word. So how did, how did Lucifer fall from heaven? He fell from heaven because of pride. I can get to heaven another way. That's what pride says. What, let's read it. It says in verse number 13. He says, for thou hast said in thy heart, I would ascend into heaven. I would exalt my throne above the stars. I will sit up on the mountain of the congregation in the size of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high God. See, he, he didn't need God. That's the same thing that church says over there that says you can be baptized in water in Jesus' name and go to heaven. Or you can confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart God raised Jesus from the dead and you can go still go to heaven. My job is to show you you are fallen from grace. See, I, I used to look, you know, it's just like all the inventions we get today and you get these drones where the drone goes over place and show you a shot down. And I believe that's what God has done with me. He has allowed me to see down because it's not by going up. It's about falling down. Because he already put you as high as you can go. 
Let's go to Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians. See, God did it. He, he set you in heavenly places in Christ. And your job is to make sure nobody gets you to come down. <laughs> Ephesians uh, chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1. All right. Now, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, we gonna, we, all we're showing you is everything God did for you. And still, a religion offered you salvation and you left God and went. So all these different churches that you've seen, probably 100, over 100 in Pontiac, if they're not preaching to you, which I don't know, the gospel of Christ to be saved or the gospel of grace not to be saved, that you were saved. So if church is not telling you you were saved, it's not God's church. So this is what you got to understand today. So you out there who listen to this television broadcast, you got to determine, are you going to go to a church that tell you how to be saved? See, how to be saved means how to get from earth to heaven. How do I get from earth to heaven, pastor? Because if I'm going to go to your church, when I die, I want to go to heaven. So how do I get there? That's what the message is about. Well, all you got to do is come over here and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart God raised Jesus from the dead and you surely be get to heaven. They lied. Because God already told you how you're going to get there. I'm getting ready to read it. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. Here we go. Verse 1 saying, You has he quickened who were dead in trespass and sin. So God already made you alive. That's the 1 Corinthians 15, 22. I'm not going to it. 1 Corinthians 15, 22. When God put you in Christ, he made you alive. That means quicken. He quickened you, made you alive. Now, are you going to tell me that church you're going to is going to make you alive? See, God already saved you. And until you understand that, you're still going to be trying to get saved. You're still trying to get saved. That's why most churches are trying to get folks saved. See, my job is to teach you about your salvation, not try to get you saved. See, I used to be there. I used to think I had to get folks saved when they come here. No, they've already been saved. I just got to get their eyes open and let them know what God already did for them. All right. Now, let's go down and look at verse 4. We're in Ephesians 2 and 4. Read. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, his great love is a cross for us, why we would, I want to cut that in there and show you where he put Romans. We're going to come right back. Go to Romans chapter 5 and verse 6. And do we come back here? Because here it said, but God, who's rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, what is he talking about? That's why he gave it to us in Romans 5 and verse 6. Come, you got to keep up today. Read Romans 5 and 6. Read it. For when we were without strength in due time, Christ did what? Christ died for the ungodly. How many know that was us? All right. Verse number 7. Read it. For scarcely for a righteous man will one dare to die. Preadventure for a good man, some will even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ did what? Christ died for us already. Why did he die? Why he died for us? That's the problem. The church, the church still don't know Christ died to save you. Christ gave his life to save you. Look at 2 Corinthians 5, 21. The most important you th thing you have is your salvation. Just think about all the time you've spent on whatever and you ain't working. You spend it all. You, you goofing off. You need to spend that time on your salvation. Make sure you're saved. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. 2 Corinthians, not 17, 21. I'm not going to do, I'm not going to do 17 today. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Are you there? 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Are you there? Amen. All right, let's read together. 
for he has made him. Talk about Christ. Christ died for your sin. Let's see what God had to make him to be taking your place. He made him to be sin. So when the Bible said Christ died for your sins, once God put his sins, put your sins on Christ, he had to die. Because the soul that sinners shall surely die. So he didn't want you to die, he died in your place. So, so now all this has happened, and you go to another church and, and, and get saved. It's not me you left, it's Christ. You are fallen from grace. Christ is grace. You left Christ. Christ has made of none effect to you no more. You chose religion over Christ. All right, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For he has made him to be sin for us. See, he not only died for your sins, he took your sins. He had to be made sins. Why? That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So here is God made you righteous in Christ. Say it with me. God, God made you righteous in Christ. Watch what religious tell you. Watch what religion tells you. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be righteous. You shall be saved. What's going on here? See, God already did this. So that's why people don't understand the word. This is why you got to understand the word of God tells you what God already did. And he show you a group of people in there trying to get saved called Israel. And what happens here, because you don't know how to rightly divide the truth, the gospel of Christ is to the Gentile. The Gentile was saved at the cross. The, all men were saved at the cross, but the Jews rejected it. So they had to go in their own way. So, so uh, we're going to look at Romans chapter, let me finish this, but we're going to look at Romans chapter 10, verse 1 through 4 next. I'm reading you Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse 5, right? Are you there? All right, let's read it. Even when you were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. He made us alive together with Christ. He raised us from the dead together with Christ. Verse number six. And has, watch where he put you at. And has raised us up together, made us sit together in a heavenly place in Christ. Made us sit there. I need you to get me a chair. Uh, right here. Yeah, give me one. I'll hear one already right up here. Put, put one right there. Well, put the sh small one on this side because the big one's going to come here. Put it right here for this, for this side. God already set you in heavenly places in Christ. Put another one right here. I'm going to sit on this so I'll make sure I don't be on the end. All right. We don't want to do the hump, the dump, the Set on a wall. <laughs> God already set you in heavenly places in Christ. You have nobody higher than you. He set you in heavenly places in Christ. Far above all principalities and powers and angels and might. Why he do that? Because he gave you what Adam lost. See, Adam used to be, if you go back to Genesis, he put Adam over the works of his hands. Angels also are the works of his hands. All angels are the works of his hands. He created all of them and put Adam over all. That's what your Bible told you. All things to the church. And now what happened is you do like Adam. The tempter came to Adam and said to Adam in Genesis chapter 3, put that down, we're going to look at seven verses. Now, we're going to go through all the verses that we have to go through right now. And so what we do is we leave the grace of God. See, I looked around this church, I'm going like, Lord, there's something going on here. He said, they don't understand your message. So you got to understand, they, they got to come to a place to realize you left the grace of God. You need to ask your pastor, why don't you preach Christ crucified for salvation? They're not, because they're preaching a faith 
A, a, see, faith is a, is a way. It's called the way of faith. That's why the Bible said there are many ways. See, there are many ways, but they do not lead to life. So faith is a way, but it don't lead you to life. So people are teaching you things. So let, let's, let's do these. Ephesians chapter number 2. I want to show you in verse 6 now. Go back to verse 6. Read it. And has raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. Where am I sitting right now? I'm sitting in heavenly places in Christ. Nobody over me. Nobody higher than me. Now watch what happened. See, what happened is when somebody gets you to be a part of anything else, they just got you away from Christ. You just sold your soul. Christ becoming an effect. I don't care what, what it is, because you have to join it. And to join anything, you became one with it. See, people don't understand what they did. You just left God. All right, now. Let's read verse 7. Read. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace, his grace and his kindness toward us. See, there's three of them. We're going to put down Titus chapter 3, verse 3 through 7. I'm going to show you. It's his grace, his kindness, his love is what you walked away from. You walked away from his grace, his kindness, and his love to go join another church. Because that church only going to tell you to come here and be saved. And to be saved there is to reject you were saved here. By grace you are saved. I'm saved. But once I go join the church over there, they told me I'm saved when I get over there. So somebody got to be, somebody lied to me. Wasn't God. God saved you. And he set you in heavenly place in Christ. You left. Just like all the angels did when they were with God. They left God. The tempter tempted them. Adam left. Adam fell from grace. So we have to understand this is no game. Either you are under a gospel of Christ, which is the only gospel in this Bible that God gave you. There's not another. And I'm going to show you in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Write it down, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, verse 1 through 4. And then we're going to skip down there in verse number. I'm going to say about. I get that after that. We're going to show you all those false prophets, how, how, you got, how it made it happen. They transformed themselves. All right. 2 Corinthians chapter, I'm sorry, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 7. In the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Then he's going to tell you again, for by grace you are saved. For by grace you are saved. He, why does he keep saying this? Because he's already saved you. The mindset of people when they go to church is to get saved. I come here today to get saved. Come to our church so you can be saved. Do you believe you're once saved, always saved? And then when I came out, God said, I want you to throw something out there. Just put this out there. Being saved is not going to heaven. You don't have eternal life because you say, what? <laughs> See, he saved you. The next thing he want to do is give you eternal life. Amen. But what happens is you leave him. See, that's why he did it that way. He saved you. He set you down in heaven to place in Christ. Then he took you through the temptations. Come over here to my church. I baptize you in water and say, da, da, pa, pa, no. you will speak with another language. So what you do, you get up and you walk, you leave. And you go over there, you go over there and join that church. Well, over here, there's the biggest church. Boom! 
come in here and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Pay your tithe, be a, take the class, be a part of this church. That's what you do. Then you got this other person over here saying, listen, I, don't, I have churches all over the world. I have to have the right church, don't I? I even have the mother of Jesus a part of my ministry. So people leave and they go. And God said, same thing Adam did. They left me for religion, for traditional men. But now Christ is not in fact. You just walked away from the grace of God. You frustrated the grace of God. That's, that's uh, Galatians 2.20 and 21. That's why Galatians 2.20 said, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me, child. And then Paul said, listen, I do not frustrate, reject, treat as nothing, the grace of God, that's what happens. All right. Now, I just gave you Ephesians. So he says, by grace you are saved through faith, not of yourself. It's a, it's, watch this. Wait a minute. Over here, God gave you the salvation free. A gift of God. You go over there, you got to confess to get it. You go over here, you got to get baptized in water to get it. You go over here, you get baptized as the baby. You got it all your life. You even got, the, you even got Jesus' mother part of that ministry. She tells her son what to do. Some of y'all don't understand that, but when you get married in a, that church, you have to go ask Mary for the permission to marry him. See, some of y'all just don't know. I'm, I don't, so many things I can't say because I'm, 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 I'm ministering over the way, but I, can't, I, I have to do what I got to do today. I have, to, I have to know that God got me covered. I have to open. You got, your eye got to become open. Some of y'all know this. You go to, been to them churches, been to them places and know this, but you're afraid to say something. But I have to tell you because I'm, I have to get the eyes open. Today, I got to get your eyes open. Because some of y'all, you see, but you act like you don't see. And I don't want you ever thinking that religion is better than a seat with the Most High God. Don't leave, don't leave your seat. See that an old covenant talk about God did set them in slippery places. You got to be able to sit, sit here with Him. Sit here means the work is finished. Sit here means I'm not looking for nobody. To take me away. God, you must understand, the devil will send anybody and anything to you to get you to leave this seat. Whole lot of folks been sitting where you're sitting in church. They don't go to church no more. You got to understand. Whole lot of folk. This church will be full before Christmas. Now that's what I believe. That's what I believe. Because when people hear this message, oh my God, why don't you ask your pastor, does he preach grace? Because that's where the dispensation you in now. And people watch the broadcast. I want to ask the question, how many people watched your broadcast last week on 9 o'clock service? Somebody who know, they looked at it. This how many was on the 9 o'clock service. I don't need everybody to get up and just, I, I, how many were? You, you don't know. I asked you to everything the same week. To look at your Facebook and say how many people watched your Facebook broadcast last week. Not your podcast, your Facebook. 9 o'clock service last week or 11 o'clock service. That's what we at. People don't know. They got a Facebook in their hand praying for it. Don't know how many people watching their program. See, the salvation ain't, it's not like, I don't know. Actually, every week. You still don't know, three weeks in a row. 
See, somewhere down the line, you're going to have to realize your Facebook ain't for all this other stuff. It's for your broadcast. God gave you a phone so you can be able to get your broadcast. God gave you a podcast on there so you can watch the word. So you watch everything else and don't even know nothing about the word. This game, this is not a game. All right, let's move on. Now, I know, but I'm not going to tell you. Okay, because I don't, I don't need to go play them games. I asked you last week. I asked you two weeks ago. Whew. Let me move on. Now, now give me the scriptures I gave you. Let's go to Romans 10. All right, Romans 10 verse 1. Now, this is what happened to Israel. Same thing. Romans chapter number 10. See, Israel, we're going to start 9. Go 9 and 30. Go back to 9 and 30. Romans chapter 9, verse 30. Am I okay? The people on this side, I'm going to be on your side in a minute, okay? Well, matter of fact, I think I'll come over there and not give them a little time. Romans, Romans 9 and 30. Romans chapter 9, verse 30. Would you take this left a little further so that side can see me? Okay. Just take it over that way a little bit. Okay, thank you very much. You okay? Yeah. All right. We all right over there? I know we got some of that cone over there. Uh, Bishop Big Dad and Daughter, you all right over there? Can you see me? She got me covered. All right, Romans chapter 10. I'll be back over there in a moment. Right, Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Are you there? Nine, nine, nine and 30. You're going to back up, right. Read verse 9 and 30. It said, what shall we say then that the Gentiles who have fallen out righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is, by, which is of faith. Now, the Gentiles got it. Watch this. But Israel was followed after the law, right? What are they looking for? The They're trying to find righteousness by keeping the law. That's what it, they, they, the law of righteousness means you got to do something to be righteous. That's the law of righteousness. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, if you believe in your heart God raised you from the dead, thou shalt be saved. See, then you will go to heaven. As a matter of fact, you'll be a part of our church, take the catechism class, and then you, you'll be here for a year or something like that, and all this here, then you'll be saved. Matter of fact, you follow the people back here, you get the Holy Ghost this morning, we can't speak in tongues. So you get all that. Christ already gave you all things. So you are leaving, you are leaving him for them. That's what you're doing. And that's what church folks are. And they just go into church without, without Christ. Because once you left grace, Christ has no more effect in your life. So that's why you got all this stuff and people kind of fake it like it's real. Romans chapter 10, I'm sorry, 9 and verse 32. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it is were by the works of the law. See, they're still trying to do something to be saved. That's what religion is. Religion is what can I do to be saved? All right. They stumbled is what they did at that stumbling stone. How many know that stumbling stone is Christ? All right. As it is written, behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone, a rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Brethren, now we go into Romans 10 and 1. My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be. Isn't that something? Now, what was Israel's problem? Verse number 2. I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. They are very zealous of God. But it's not according to knowledge. See, it's not according to 1 Corinthians chapter I'm sorry, Galatians 1 and 6. There's only one gospel to believe. That's the gospel of Christ. That's not what those churches are preaching you. And you got people are packing up in there. Somebody got to say something. Got to be me. You know it got to be me. All right. Verse number three. For they be in England. Remember Paul said, open their eyes, turning from darkness to light, turning from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive. Well, what is the power of God? Power of darkness, ignorance. All through his word, brethren, do not be ignorant, brothers. And verse number three, 
For they then ignorant of God's righteousness. Well, who is God's righteousness? Christ. First Corinthians 1 and 30. First Corinthians 1 and 30. That's Christ is made unto us righteousness. Wisdom. Justification. Sanctification. All that's Christ. All right. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, going about to do what? Yes. To establish their own righteousness. What you think you're doing when you went to the church and told you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart, God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You went and established your own righteousness. What you said to God was, I know you had a seat for me. Yeah, you had a seat. You had a seat. I sit with you in heavenly place in Christ. But you know what? I'm coming down because I'm going over here because I'm going to get right this morning. I'm coming to church this morning because I got to get right with God. Come on, get right with God. And you join that church and you think you're right with God. Or you come over here and you join this church where you have Mary. You've got the mother Mary sitting right over in the corner. You got everything. You come over here and get baptized in water in Jesus' name. You got it all. That's all churches teaching you. Baptism in water and repentance. But the key is this here. You had to leave your seat. Because you sit together already. When God raised you from the dead, he set you in heaven. Find the one in, 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 I think, Colossians where he says that the church may know over all principalities and power and wisdom. That kind of thing. He put you over everything and gave all things to the church. But see, the church don't know what God gave them. So they're trying to get it. So they, that's what happened with Galatia. So Paul said, who has been with you? You just left the grace of God and went to a church where you got people telling you about circumcision and baptism. The grace of God is no effect in your life now. You just frustrated the grace of God. You just rejected God and his son and his work he had done for you on the cross. You just walked over that. That's what he told me. That's what he told him in Hebrew. You trodden on a foot, the son of God that made him an open shame. He just walked all over it and went on to join you a church. See, this is what people are doing. They just they leave in the grace of God. That's why you don't have many people preach the grace of God. They don't know it. So they give you a sermon. Romans chapter number 10 and verse 3, we're going to move on. It says, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness, they're going about to establish their own righteousness and have not submitted. That means they have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. See, they don't want to submit to what God already did. That's pride. They rather go join somebody else, church, where they got this. So you already know who going to come here. If I got this kind of church, I know the people going to come. See, that's why they don't want to preach Christ. Because folk ain't going to go to church. They don't want to go to church. Because he just preaching Christ over there. He just preached the grace of God over there. I want to be somewhere. I want to be. So you're going to leave the grace of God to go be with somebody else. That's your mentality. Because you don't know what you got. That's what happened to Enoch. Esau, he sold his birthright for a bowl of pottage. Because he didn't know what he had. See, that's what church folk are. They just want to go with the crowd. There's not enough people here. What you think about the ten people were hiding in the days of Paul? Ten here and ten here and ten here hiding just so they can get the word. There are some places they tear the Bible up, the new covenant, and pass out pages. So you don't know what you have. They're going about to establish their own right. Then they say, look, Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. Having Christ is what it's all about. To everyone they believe. But if you go to religion, you left Christ. All right, who got something for me? Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through 7. All right, let's go to Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through 7. Now, th this is what happened with Adam. See, what happened with Adam is happened with the churches today. They left the grace of God. See, we look at Adam, we says, 
He the one got us into this mess. No, he got himself into this mess. You getting your own self into this mess because God did the same thing for you that he did for Adam. He created us in Christ, set us at his own right hand, put us over all principalities and powers, blessed us with all spiritual things in heavenly place in Christ, gave him to be the head of all things of the church, gave you everything. You know what you did? You left that and you went over there and joined your church. That's what people are doing. They don't want the grace of God. They don't want the grace of God. Preach the word for an hour? I got to sit up in the church for an hour for the word? Yeah, for one hour. That's why Jesus Christ's disciples turned him in. Because they couldn't stay awake one hour. And the enemy came right in the garden and took him from them. Because they didn't watch. See, we don't want, we don't want the word. All right, uh, chapter 3. Uh, Genesis chapter 3. Now, here, 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 verse 1 through 7 is going to self explain itself. Read it. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. We're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1 after this. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Yea, has God, now he's talking to the soul, all that is. He's talking to the soul. Yea, has God said, You shall not eat of the tree of, uh, of, of, uh, eat of the, tree of the garden. Every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the trees which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said to the woman, You shall not surely die. It's no different. Uh, should I go over here where I can confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe my heart God raised Jesus from the dead? <laughs> I'm only going to go eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, Father. Or am I going to go over here where they got married already in the church? That's Jesus' mama. See, I'm going to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's all I'm going to go do, Lord. I'm going to go get water baptized in Jesus' name. I'm only going to leave the gospel of Christ to go, to experience, for an experience. I'm leaving salvation for an experience. Just one night out. I come back next Sunday. So here, here's Eve. You shall surely die. And verse number four. The serpent said to her, you're not going to die. For God doesn't know that in the day you eat thereof, your eyes are going to be open, girl. No, her eye wasn't open. They were closed. See, that's what religion done to people, blinded their mind. That's why Paul told him in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse uh, 3 through 7. If our gospel be hid, put in your note, it hid from them that are lost, whom the God of this world did what? Blind their mind. That's what happened to her. She, she, her mind was blind. Religion will blind your mind. That's what happened. You go to a church religion, you think you got it. It blinded your mind. The next thing is going to happen is destroy your life. That's what it's after. God does know in the day you eat thereof, your eyes are going to be open in verse 5. And watch this. And you're going to be as gods, knowing good and evil. Girl, you're going to get a chance to know good and evil. God did not want her to know good or evil. She only, he only wanted her to know God. See, that's what happened. Now she knows good and evil. Because now she's like God, the serpent told her. But that was not the end of the story. Uh, verse number six. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes. You see the same thing, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. The same temptation came to Christ when he was in the garden. The woman said that the tree was good for food, pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired, to make one wise, to make one wise. You were created in, in God's wisdom. You were created in Christ. Christ is the wisdom of God. So you have everything. But you didn't know what you had. See, that's why the new covenant is about knowledge. 
You must know what you have. That's what protects you from what the enemy trying to offer. So if she had a said to Satan, I already got the wisdom of God. I'm already like God. I already sit in heavenly place. I'm not trying to go to another church. I'm already the church. I am the church. So repent, repent, and join the church. I'm already the church. See, you don't know what to answer, so that's why people ends up there. They ends up there. So, so Genesis uh, chapter number three. Uh, I'm reading verse number six now. And when the woman saw, Genesis 3 and 6, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave to her husband with her and he did eat. Watch what happened. The eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. So why did they do all that if their eyes were open? They saw their own nakedness. They realized what they had done. They had been deceived. That's what God have to do. When, when, God, when God opened your eye, you're able to see you've been deceived. They went from flesh to, from spirit to flesh. That's why they saw their own nakedness. Because they did not see their nakedness before. Why? Because they were in spirit. So they went from spirit to flesh. So what did God do when he saved you? Put you back into the spirit. Get the Lord prayed. He put you back in the spirit. That's Romans chapter 8, verse 8, 9, 10. You are not in the flesh, but you're in the spirit. If so be that you are. The spirit of Christ is in you. Now then a man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. So what did God do? He put you back in the spirit again. And everything, see, that's why he gave you the prodigal son. So when you read the prodigal son, this is what he did. The prodigal son got his inheritance and left the father's house and went out and joined himself to other churches. That's all he did. And when he realized that he ran broke and that was not the way, he said, I'll return to my father's house. And that's what he did. He, the Holy Spirit let him know that you were going to a church, you had left the grace of God, you left your father's house, you left your inheritance, you left your seat of authority, you left your reign, you left everything to go join yourself to some other church. And that man sit there and say, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going home. I'm going back to my father's house. My father has everything and I'm going home. How many can see that now? That's what the prodigal son's about. And he got up and he went back to the father's house. And he said, father, I'm sorry, father, I don't want to hear that. You're home now. Try to explain to the father all that stuff he did. I don't want to hear that. Welcome home. Somebody go kill the fatty cat. <laughs> Somebody go, get, give me the ring. Put the ring back on his finger. Give him his authority back. Give him his power back. Give him his seat back. Give him his blessing back. Give everything that he has back. Give it back to my son. This my son was lost. My son has come to himself. Hallelujah. That's what's going to happen. To people here in this mess. They left the grace of God. They fell from grace. Because they thought that was what it's all about. Religion. It's what blinds your mind. The God of this world blinds their mind. Let's go to the next one. What else I got? Second Corinthians chapter 11. Let's go there. Now, Second Corinthians chapter number 11. We're going to show you in this that this is why Paul feared for the church. What happened to Eve? Because every church that he started, his whole thing was 
when he get back on his next journey, will they still be in grace? Can you see why you have me, when you say to me, Pastor, why don't we invite pastors to come in and minister? My question to you is, who? <laughs> who do you know preach the gospel of Christ? Who do you know preach the gospel of grace? And I'm not talking about no sermon for a morning, just on grace. And then you give an out communion at the door when you walk through the your service. There's a whole lot of church like that. They'll do that, they'll give you communion at the door. They don't know anything about grace. And they're also preaching you the last days. How do you have a last days in grace? You in the spirit. There's no spirit in, there's no last days in the spirit. See, some of y'all don't know, that's why you can't say nothing. You think Adam had last days before he ate of the tree of not the good and evil? See, there's no last days in the spirit. You, that's how you can get eternal life because you're in the spirit. Everything in the spirit is eternal. So that's why he had put Adam in the garden. Adam would live eternally in the garden. See, that's what you got to understand. God put you back in the spirit realm. You are not in the flesh anymore. You're in the spirit. So you have to know what God did. I want to do this, and I want to do Ephesians 1 and 3. Let's look at here, verse 1. You are in uh, 2 Corinthians 11 and 1, right? Read. What to God, you bear with me a little in my father. Are you all there? Yeah. All right, let's read together. It says, for I am jealous over you with God the jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So he's talking to the church. And my job is to make sure that I present you to Christ Without a husband. See, I don't need you to be over here where you have many husbands. That's what happened with the, the, the church. She left Christ and went and joined herself to other places. That's why you have, when God teaches you this woman in the Bible, in the book of Hosea, that's what Israel did. And this is, this is what he's talking about. You leave the grace of God. You leave Christ. You're married to Christ. You've been joined to the Lord. He that joined to the Lord in one spirit. Yes. What is it, 2 Corinthians 6, 17? 1 Corinthians 6, 17. Check it out. But you've already been joined to the Lord. you one spirit. Now you're going to go over here to get saved. Just think about what you just said. You, you were saved at the cross. He's already saved you. He's already given you everything you, he has. He has blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, Ephesians 1 and 3. He has already saved you with his love, with his kindness, with his mercy. And you know what you do one morning? You get up and say, you know what? I think I'm going to go to this church this week and join and get saved. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. Okay, just for the tape's sake. All right, now well, let's read. It says 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse number uh, 2. I'm jealous over you with God the jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguile Eve, how he do it? Through his subtlety. So your mind should be corrupted, watch this, from, from, you're going to fall from the simplicity that's in Christ. That's what I, I don't think you realize that you're already in Christ. So his whole thing was, I don't think you realize what you have in Christ. Verse 4, we're going to close out with Galatians 1 and 6. For he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached. If you receive another spirit, you hear another gospel, which is not... He's telling you, you got another gospel, you got another spirit. You got another spirit, you got another, because you preach another Jesus. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry, Galatians, Galatians 1 and 6. Now you're going to hear Galatians 1 and 6 like you've never heard before, because now you know. We're only going to read Galatians uh, 1 and 6 through 10, we're done. Are you there? Read it. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that call you into the grace of Christ. Can't you see God call you where? Into the grace of Christ. And soon as somebody opened their church, you know what you did? You left the grace of Christ. I'm going over here this morning. 
Because he crumped don't speak in tongues enough over there. Now he probably speak in tongues, but he don't, he don't speak in tongues enough. Do you speak in tongues? That's what folks always, how do you speak in tongues? Speak, that's my privacy. Speaking in tongues is my privacy. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. It's my time with him. See, this morning when I, 4, 4 o'clock, 3.30 this morning, 3.30, 3.30 is when I get up this morning because I had to pray before that. See, I, I, with the Lord, I, can, I do all that because nobody understands that but him. Oh, you don't hear me. All right. Now, here we go. Now, I'm not trying to put nobody down, but I'm just trying to tell you about me when you're talking about do I, okay? Verse 6, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that call you into the grace of Christ to another gospel. He said, I can't believe you have gone to another church, listen to another gospel, and there is no other gospel. You cannot find but one gospel in the dispensation of grace, and that's the gospel of Christ. And yet, folks, leave the gospel of Christ and go and join themselves with a church that ain't no gospel. The gospel is God's story. So write that down. The definition of the word, the gospel, is God's story. God only got one story. And he doesn't have a faith story or a baptism story or a repent story. He got a Christ story. But see, the thing about it is we don't know. We just let things happen and we just go on, flock up in there. Giving our offerings and everything to help build something God did not start. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 6, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that call you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, which is not another. Well, what's going on, Pastor? But there are some that trouble you, and they are perverting. They are perverting the gospel of Christ. They are front. They are fronting the gospel of Christ like they got the gospel of Christ to preach their own thing, and they're deceiving the people that go there. Hey, my time is up. First Corinthians chapter 15, step on your feet. First Corinthians chapter 15, you only got part of the story. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. Give the Lord a great big hand. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel, Paul says, which I preach, which also you have received and where you stand, by which also, by this gospel, you are already saved. saved. What you got to do is not let the devil take it because you got to keep in memory what I preach to you unless you have believed in vain because the enemy wants to get you somewhere else. I deliver to you, first of all, that which I also received, Paul says, how that Christ died. He gave you his gospel, how Christ died for our sins according to the scripture and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. See, that's my gospel. And I'm going to show you that when I get ready to close is verse 10. By the grace of God, by this gospel, I am what I am. You can't say that about another thing that anybody else preach. But people are trying to tell you, I am what I am by faith. I am what I am by faith. Oh, I'm so glad the girl was baptized in Jesus' name. Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labor more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Either God, if God's going to take you through, you're going to have to have the grace of God. By the grace of God, I am what I am. Nowhere in the Bible is saved without God's grace. By grace, by God's grace, I can do all things. By God's grace, I can have all things. By God's grace, everything. God's grace is sufficient. Somebody get a lot of great big hand. My time is already over. I thank you for yours. And the door of faith is open under you.